What happened to the monkeys? A TV show about a rock band was the brainchild of Bob Rafelson and Bert Schneider. The Monkees production kicked off in early 1966 after the NBC network approved of the concept. Peter Tork and Michael Nesmith were musicians with extensive live and studio performance backgrounds. Although they were mostly performers, Mickey Dolenz and Davy Jones had dabbled in pop music. When the Monkees made their NBC debut in the fall of 1966, they immediately became a rating success. The group's debut track, Last Train to Clarksville, had risen to the top a few weeks previously. The Monkees resented Don Kirshner's limitations as they grew more assured in their ability to perform. Don Kirshner would not allow the band to play any instruments on the songs, or even write the songs. All they could do were sing the vocals. The Monkees were a talented, upbeat rock group that could work hard. The Monkees collaborated with a fantastic group of composers and musicians on their early releases. Nesmith and Twerk were incensed when the Monkees were given copies of their second album in 1967. The four monkeys got into a fight over this and demanded control over the music they performed. In the spring of 1967, Kirshner was fired after Rafelson and Schneider decided to support his stars. Chip Douglas produced the recording of the monkeys' third album, Headquarters. In May 1967, the album shot to the top of the charts. In November 1967, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones LTD, a new Monkees album, was released. The foursome had already begun to disintegrate by the time The Birds, The Bees, and The Monkees, which was released in April 1968, was being recorded. The Monkees television series was not renewed after two successful seasons because the band planned to begin a career in filmmaking. However, Head... Their first and only feature film was a financial failure. It was a satire of the monkeys' own peculiar stardom and the culture that surrounded them that was frequently clever and challenging, but it also had virtually no plot and confused the younger viewers who made up the TV show's biggest fan base. After the soundtrack album labored to a rather pitiful number of 45 in the charts, Peter Tork decided to leave the group. In 1969, the Monkees released two albums as a trio, Instant Replay and The Monkees Present. While both contained excellent music that demonstrated the group's continued development, no major hits were introduced by either album and the band's commercial success was beginning to decline. After the publication of The Wichita Train Whistle Sings, an instrumental solo album by Nesmith in late 1969 and the 1970 release of Changes, the group's final album with only Dolans and Jones, the Monkees quietly disbanded. Nesmith went on to have a well-regarded and modestly successful solo career, releasing a number of top-notch country rock albums. He also had great success in the entertainment industry, producing music videos, feature films, and running the Pacific Arts Film and Video label. Dolans and Jones who alternated between acting and music, teamed up with Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart in 1975 to record a new album. The quartet then went on tour, performing both their new songs and many of the Monkees' hits. Tork's music career remained mostly unnoticed during the 1970s, even though he headed a band by the name of Release, ran a music production company, collaborated with Dolans and Jones to produce a Christmas single in 1976, and was courted by Sire Records for a solo deal. After the band disbanded, the Monkees television show continued to air for many more years in reruns. In 1985, MTV hosted a day-long marathon of Monkees episodes as a tribute to the show and the band that helped unite rock and television. Reruns of the Monkees became a common occurrence on the network as a result of the rating success of the marathon. While Nesmith was unable to join his bands due to work obligations, Dolans, Jones, and Twerk were up for the reunion tour, which was organized by producer and promoter David Fishoff. The tour was a huge commercial success, and as a result, much of the Monkees' back catalog returned to the charts. 
Nesmith also made a cameo appearance with the Monkees during their sold-out performance at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles, as well as a joint appearance on an MTV Christmas video. Dolans and Torque released a new single in 1986 called That Was Then, This Is Now, which was included on a Monkees Greatest Hits album and went on to become a top 40 hit. The Monkees, again without Nesmith, decided to record a new album in response to the single's success, but 1987's Pull It was not well received by critics or listeners, and the group quickly split up once more, although Dolans and Jones occasionally performed together. In the mid-1990s, as the 30th anniversary of the Monkees' debut approached, Rhino Records, which had previously released the band's back catalog, took full ownership of the group's record and film heritage and started a series of definitive reissues. Dolan's Jones, Nesmith, and Torque got together to jam for fun after it was suggested that there would be another reunion tour. Just Us, which was released in October 1996, was the first Monkees album written, performed, and produced exclusively by the four band members. They decided to record a new album because they had enjoyed the process so much. The four monkeys were scheduled to participate in a Globe concert tour to support the album, as well as an accompanying television special called Hey Hey, We're the Monkeys. Although the tour continued without Nesmith following a series of shows in the UK in 1997, the other three did nothing to hide their dissatisfaction with Nesmith in the media. The three-piece monkeys embarked on another tour in 2001, but Torque quit before the show's final dates. Dolans and Jones claimed he had been fired, but Torque claimed that he had resigned. Dolans and Jones kept up their collaboration touring the U.S. and U.K. in 2002. After that, they parted ways, skipped their 40th anniversary, and pursued their professions, which caused the band to go dormant for years. Dolan's Jones and Torque decided to reform when their 45th anniversary came around in 2011 and they embarked on a summer-long extended tour of North America. The band members' reluctance to spend the rest of the year exhausting themselves because of the fast pace put a stop to further preparations for traveling. Davy Jones passed away in February 2012 at the age of 66. So these 2011 performances were their final performances with Davy Jones. Nesmith's decision to reunite with the group was spurred on by Jones' passing and at the year's end, they set off on a run of reunion gigs that included heartfelt tributes to Jones every night. They also went on tour in 2013 and 2014 before Nesmith announced his comeback. For a 2015 excursion, Torque and Dolans carried on in the established Monkees tradition without him. The Monkees may have appeared to have reached the end of their recording career at this point, but in early 2016, Dolans released a new album that had been made by the group. Good Times was produced by Adam Schlesinger of Fountains of Wayne and released in May 2016 on the group's longtime label, Rhino. It contains songs from the 60s that were never finished, as well as songs written for the band by contemporary musicians like Rivers Cuomo of Weezer, Ben Gibbard of Death Cab for Cutie, and Andy Partridge of XTC. Schlesinger and the Monkees reunited in 2018 to record the holiday album Christmas Party. Christmas Party includes songs by Partridge and Cuomo, as well as one that was co-written by Peter Buck and Scott McCauley just like good times before it. Peter Tork's battle with cancer affected his salivary glands, and it turned out to be his swan song. He passed away on February 21st, 2019, and Christmas Party turned out to be his final performance. A proper Monkees tour was no longer feasible due to the deaths of Jones and Tork, but that didn't stop Mickey Dolans and Mike Nesmith from going on tour together in 2019. Their run, however, was cut short due to Nesmith's illness. From recordings of the Dolans and Nesmith tour in March 2019, The Monkees Live, The Mike and Mickey Show was put together and released the following year. For a brief series of dates for the band's finals performances, Nesmith and Dolans took the road once more in 2021. The tour concluded in mid-November and Nesmith passed away quietly at home on December 10, 2021. And as of December 2022, 
Mickey Dolenz is the final surviving member of the Monkees, and he is still alive and well. And that's what happened to the Monkees. Thanks for watching, and like and subscribe if you haven't already. I want to thank Bunny23723 for this request. And if you want your request to be in a video, let me know right down in the comments below. Or if you want a guaranteed request, donate some money on Patreon, please. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.